I remember when I first started out on my healing journey, there were days, days and days, weeks, if not months occasionally, where I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to do anything. The pain and the suffering of trying to figure myself out and understand the traumatic experiences that I've gone through in my life was just too overwhelming. But every day I continued to work at it. I continued to push myself and to become the best version of myself. Even though it was difficult, there were times where I wanted to give up days and days of crying and trying to meditate and understand who I am, I still continued to push. I pushed every single day. And what you'll see on the healing journey is it's, it's not linear. You know, there's gonna be ups and downs. There's gonna be bumps in the road, just like life is a roller coaster. You're not gonna have a million amazing great days in a row. There's gonna be difficult days, but those difficult days show you who you truly are. And when you persevere through those difficult times, you gain this inner strength and this knowing that you can accomplish anything you want in this lifetime. Early on in the healing journey, there were times where I just didn't even know what to do with myself. There were days where I laid in bed all day and I watched movies and I ate ice cream, ice cream after ice cream, pints and pints. And you know, that was my form of healing, uh, giving my body something that I usually don't give it. You know, I was a former bodybuilder, so I was always very health conscious, but you know, in my down times, I, I, I didn't know what to do. And so I'd lay in pity and uh, feel bad for myself and eat my feelings away. But eventually that passed and eventually I got back to a normal eating routine and I started feeling better about myself. And it really goes to say, you know, what we put in our bodies is really going to dictate how we live our everyday life. You know, getting away from chemicals and sugar and gluten, all the processed foods, you will start to feel better. And where the body goes, the mind flows. So the more you focus on your health and what you're putting in your body, the better you're going to feel. And in times, you know, we think that going out and having a pizza or having a beer is what we need in that moment. But really what we do need is isolation and getting away from chemicals and getting away from social media and, you know, being in the public eye and just focusing all our energy inward on ourselves. The healing journey goes through different phases. And I remember early on in my healing journey, there was a phase, like I said, I just couldn't get out of bed. I was just laying in bed all day, eating ice cream, watching movies. And I had to drink three to six cups of coffee every single day. I was over caffeinated, way over stimulated. And that actually ended up giving me severe anxiety, but I needed that coping tool, that coping mechanism of caffeine, just to help me uh, get through my day. And then as, you know, the days progressed, the weeks, the months progressed, and I continued to feel better, I started pulling back on the caffeine, I started getting out in nature, I started going outside, doing hikes, I started realizing that the most simple things is truly what I needed in order to fully heal and recover after my traumatic experiences and to be able to truly find out who I am. There were months where I didn't go to the gym. I maybe went to the gym once every three weeks or once a month. And being a, a former competitive bodybuilder, I would go to the gym six days a week for 15, 20 years. And so to not have that anymore, and uh, it really took a toll on my health. And it wasn't until a few months in where I started feeling the motivation and the inspiration to get back in the gym. And it was a slow start, you know, I lost on my healing journey in the first few months, I lost 30 pounds, um, probably about 20 pounds of muscle, 10 pounds of fat. I was malnourished. I was in the hospital multiple times. I was in the doctor's office every other week finding out uh, what different medications I needed to take on. I had acid reflux, I had anxiety, insomnia, all these different things. And then when I started really focusing all the energy on me and getting away from the caffeine, getting away from the social media, getting back in the gym, getting out in nature, that's when I found that I actually didn't have any problems. All the problems were created in my mind because I was in a panic mode after I went through my trauma 
where I was constantly pitying myself, I was constantly in my head over analyzing every single thing. But then when I started getting out, started focusing on me, focusing back on my health, it took me out of my mind and put me in my body. And your mind is gonna follow where your body is. So if you can, you know, just go out on a walk every morning or, you know, go up to a hike or go to the beach or go anywhere, do anything, anything that's getting your body moving, you're not gonna be able to stay in your analytical mind. You're not gonna be able to create false illusions that are gonna dictate a false reality that you're living in. So as you do this more and more, it gets easier and easier. As I said, in my first few months, I lost almost 30 pounds. And I'm still not back to where I want to be, but every day it gets easier and easier. I have more energy every single day. And that was a, a tough thing for me to realize on my healing journey is, you know, when you're in your mind constantly thinking about the what ifs and the hands and the butts and oh this person did this to me oh this I have anxiety now I have PTSD from this traumatic experience you know we're creating that reality by staying in those negative thought patterns all the time so by getting out and just doing anything you're gonna allow yourself to feel a somewhat resemblance of peace and it might be short term but eventually, as you do this more and more, you go to the gym more and more, you go on walks, you get away from the caffeine, you're not checking Instagram every hour, you'll start to feel more at peace and you'll start to maintain that. And every single day, you can cultivate one of the biggest tools that I've ever used, which is self-awareness. Start analyzing every single thing that you do and every single thought that comes into your head. When you can start having the self-awareness to realize what's going on in your head, that's going to be the only time that you're truly going to be able to shift into who you want to be. Because if you don't have self-awareness, you're not going to be able to recognize the things about yourself that need work. You're not going to be able to recognize all the things you truly do need to work on. You know, we all talk about how, oh, we're going to go on the healing journey and, you know, I'm going to become the best version of myself. But no one talks about all the things and the struggles you have to go through and the tools you have to use in order to become that best version of yourself. And it's just like practicing any single thing you do in life. They say it takes 10,000 hours to master anything. So don't think in the first few weeks, the first few months, that you're just gonna be miraculously healed and be the best version of yourself. It takes a long time. I remember when I first started playing guitar when I was a kid, I thought I was gonna be Jimi Hendrix <laughs> in a few weeks. But it, it took me 15 years of playing guitar to get to a, a place where I felt like I was you know, at a level where I could do something with it if I wanted to. And it's just like that on the healing journey when you're finding yourself and becoming your most authentic version of you. It's going to take time and it's going to take practice. It takes a lot of practice and self-awareness to turn your negative thoughts into positive thoughts. Because every single day we're having constant limiting beliefs, constant negative thoughts. And we need to practice over and over and over again until it becomes a new pattern, a new habit. When we form that new habit, we're starting to form a new identity. We're starting to form a new personality. We're starting to form a new version of ourselves that we've always wanted our entire lives. One of the things I've realized on my healing journey is a lot of people don't have enough self-awareness and self-awareness is the key to mastering who you want to be because without self-awareness, we're not gonna recognize any of our faults or our flaws or our shadow side of the things we need to work on. And the average human being has 60 to 75,000 thoughts every single day. And 90% of those thoughts are negative and on repeat every single day. So if you cultivate the self-awareness tool and you can start recognizing your negative thought patterns, your limiting beliefs, then you're able to change them and become who you want to be. And the affirmations is just another tool to help you do that. Because as you write over and over and over again, I love myself, I am confident, I am smart, I am funny, whatever it is, 
It takes 21 days to make or break any habit. And if you have 60 to 75,000 thoughts every single day, and most of them are negative, as you do this for the next three weeks, you're gonna see that your mind is gonna start to shift towards positivity instead of negativity. And it, it takes time, it's not just a quick, easy fix. Like I said, it takes three weeks to really ingrain it in your brain. But at the two week, three week mark, you're gonna to start to notice manifestations happening in your life in the form of positivity, in the form of change. All the things you've ever wanted, if you ever wanted to feel that love for yourself, you're gonna to start to feel it. If you say you love yourself, a hundred times a day for the next three weeks, you're gonna to start to feel like you love yourself. You know, once we have the self-awareness tool, there are no limits to who we can become and the things we can do in this lifetime. Our inner world mirrors our outer world. So in order to have all the things we want and to be who we wanna be, we need to change everything on the inside. You know, start working on the gratitude. Be grateful for all the things you do have. Start focusing on the self-love that you can give yourself. Start falling in love with yourself more and more every day. If you're looking for your soulmate, that person you want to be with, fall in love with yourself first, and then it'll naturally happen. But you need to do the inner work in order to have all the things you want on the outside. If you want wealth, Feel wealthy now. Feel what it would feel like to be wealthy. That's how you're going to manifest and draw into the reality you want. And every day, you just have to get a little bit better and practice a little bit every single day. And eventually, you will get to where you want to be and who you want to be.